A few weeks ago, I made a video where I connected my astrophotography camera to my guide scope. I didn't have very high expectations, but it's something that I had always wanted to try. And out of that experiment came a couple of interesting images, one of the Andromeda galaxy and the other of the Cygnus loop. Now that experience got me thinking. If I could connect my guide scope to my astrophotography camera, why can't I connect my Nikon lens to my astrophotography camera? So I started doing some research, and it turns out this is actually quite common, although it was completely news to me. So I ended up getting an adapter that would connect my Nikon lens to my ZWO ASI camera. Now this adapter was produced by ZWO, so it had the proper back focus for the camera. Not only that, but it came with a tray for two inch filters. Now admittedly, I got a little bit carried away. If I could connect my existing Nikon lenses, what about a longer focal length telephoto lens? How would that work? And is there a lens that I could use with both my Nikon camera and my astrophotography camera? Turns out there is. This is the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2 lens. I would love to try this tonight, but I can't because I don't have a way to mount this yet. I do have a mounting mechanism on order, but it won't be here for another week but I really don't want to wait that long in order to try out the setup. So, here it is. My Nifty 50 connected through the adapter with an IR cut filter to my ASI 294MC Pro camera. I'm going to fix this to my tripod, and I'm going to use it to try to capture some time lapse of my Bordel 8 sky. A little bit of Velcro later and my little setup is good to go. Unfortunately, the results were less than spectacular. In fact, they were not that dissimilar to what I was able to get the previous year using my Nikon D5200 and the same lens. And other than the green glow, I couldn't see much of a difference. Maybe with darker skies and longer exposure times, there would have been more to see. The image on the left comes from the ASI camera and the image on the right from the Nikon. They are very similar, although the ASI seems to have captured a little bit more of the nebula in Orion. But with a difference so small, I think I'll continue using my Nikon for my backyard time lapse. While I'm waiting for my mounting rings to arrive, I decided to take another shot at uh, photography with my regular Nikon lenses. Specifically, I want to see what this lens, uh, which is a 200 millimeter, 55 to 200 millimeter lens, uh, is going to be able to do with the Andromeda Galaxy when paired directly with the ASI camera. So this is a follow-up to uh, when I tried to put this camera directly onto my guide scope. This is a ED lens, which means that the field of view should be much flatter, which should give me a much better image of the Andromeda Galaxy than the guide scope did. All right, I have it balanced. I just need to be able to find Andromeda with it and then keep it centered. And I think this is strong enough to do that. And this sits on the uh, piggyback mount. There it is. There's Andromeda right there. So I have my tracking on. Scope is right there. But the moon, even though it's a half moon, is setting. 
so I should have a dark sky for the rest of the night. There we go. We're running an eight hour plan, taking three minute exposures at 120 gain. This was the previous image I was able to capture with my guide scope. There's a lot of lensing around the edges. This image is unfiltered and the stars are very bloated and have these halos around them. The guide scope is 190 millimeters. Now tonight's image is shot with a 200 millimeter lens, which is much flatter across the entire field of view. And because the ZWO Nikon adapter comes with a tray, I was able to use the IR cut and UV filter. Finally, a week and a half later, it has arrived. The mounting bracket from Astrodymium. Two 3D printed rings perfectly sized for the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2 astrograph lens. point somewhere and I know exactly what I want to aim for the North American Nebula So this is the end of a journey that started with the question of what happens when you connect your astrophotography camera to your guide scope. For time-lapse photography, a nifty 50 lens paired with a regular DSLR seems to work pretty much as well as a cooled astrophotography camera. Now I still haven't abandoned the idea of taking long-term exposures with a nifty 50 with the ASI camera. I think that would be a pretty cool thing to try using my Celestron to track, but I'm gonna to have to leave that for another day. Now the 200 millimeter Nikon lens paired with the ASI 294 camera did pretty well, much better than the guide scope did. And that surprised me a little. Now, as far as the Rokinon or Samyang 135 millimeter astrograph is concerned, I'm very excited by how this lens is going to expand my astrophotography capabilities. I'm still pairing it with my Celestron Nexstar 6SE as I'm mounting it on my piggyback mount which would normally hold my DSLR. Now I've been meaning to do a video about the types of projects that I've been doing with astrophotography and I think this lens is going to fit really well with what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'll look forward to that. But for now, thanks for watching and clear skies.